<laughs> okay. So yeah, topic three: simple 3D content creation. How much freedom is enough? So what I do is what I just elaborated on. It's basically, if I have you can give a white, even a white slate, you can use a mouse, you use some sketching interface, and you sketch some user input, and you get a model. Now this is just a simplified view. Obviously, you don't get that model from this simple sketch. But uh, ideally, you get something after a couple of operations that looks something like this, and I always base it on triangle meshes. Uh, how does this relate to games? So, at GDC 2006, we'll write uh, named this game Magic Tangle as one of his main inspirations for the creature creator in Score. And uh, the software that this was based off of is done by, is researched by Takeo Hirashi from the University of Tokyo. And Takeo was one of the readers on the thesis. So that's how that's all tied together. So yeah, I, I just thought that was an interesting, interesting link to see how stuff that is done in research actually gets used in games. It doesn't happen as often as it should. So what's the main motivation for this work? Uh, I'd argue that creating models from nothing is, is difficult. It's like most artists you know how to model with clay or how to sketch, but I'd also like people to be able to do this that have no idea how to do it in the first place, that don't have these, these uh, capabilities. And even if you have a 3D model, using the tools that are on the market right now for the modification of these models is also not really easy. Like there's a lot of different tools like this here where you have to simplify it first and you move the simplified shape and you add the details back on and that element. And there's just a lot of problems. The third motivation is obvious where I have to bring in the game thing here again is user generated content in games. So there's the sport feature creator, everyone knows it, but most people love it. Most, many people don't think there's really a game behind it, but it's still very popular. And uh, most of these tools are still pretty experimental, but they seem to resonate. And uh, probably because it's really a lot of fun to use them when it's done right. So the alternatives I'm going to present, so I, 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 I built two tools for my thesis. And one was called Fiber Mesh. It's for making models out of nothing and being able to modify the models after you make them just out of nothing. And this is normally an interactive talk where you have demos. So if anyone wants to see this in action, I have it on my laptop and I can show it later because this is obviously not going to be uh, animated in any way, shape, or form. And the other thing is if you already have a model, a tool where you can just rotate the model into place and you somehow reverse sketch a silhouette, and it does a 3D deformation. So these are all tailored for people that just want to scribble on a piece of computer, in that case, <laughs> and just get some kind of result out of it. And if they don't like it, they can undo it. And it doesn't have millions and millions of buttons. It actually has no buttons at all. <coughs> so the easiest thing to do is you just sketch a silhouette in this fiber mesh tool and just in place a model. There's a lot of ways of doing this. We have one way of doing it, and it looks something like this. Another simple operation is just scribbling over the entire model and cutting off a part of it. Or you can just scri uh, scribble a base onto the model, and you can extrude a silhouette, and you get something that looks like an ear or an arm or something like that. Uh, one of the things that you notice on the previous slide is that blue curve that initially sketches the silhouette stays. So you can actually add to this network of curves that you put onto this model for the modification of the model. You can either do that by just scribbling a sketch onto it, or you can also just like do a cut and do something that looks like a lasso around the whole model. And the reason that's important is at any point you can just grab onto those blue curves and drag it around as if it was a piece of rubber. And it just drags the surface along with it. And again, this does not come across in a still. But uh, it's, it's really cool because it behaves a little bit like a, like a, like a piece of wire. And because a lot of people like tools from Photoshop, we also put in a lot of stuff that looks a little bit like smoothing, like there's this little rubbing tool where you can rub out little kinks in the curves. You can erase parts of the curve. You can just, you know, take an eraser tool, change stuff. Or you can change the properties from a smooth curve where the surface has to be smooth to sharp, so you can make little creases in the, in the surface like this. And without going into any technical details, this is what we get if after we designed the tool, we gave it to an absolute novice user and uh, instructed them about 50 minutes on how to use it and about 20 minutes to try out. This is what they came up with. And I, this was just this is what we do as a proof of concept to see that people like it. People get big eyes, they're all happy, then we usually know we're onto something. And this is what happened with this. Uh, more interesting is we gave this to a 2D artist who was who was really proficient in flash animation, but has never used a 3D model before. And he was actually one of the motivations for doing this tool in the first place because he said it'd be really cool if you could get 3D models just from his 3D sketches. 
And this is what he made after 20 minutes of trying it, which I think which, which obviously shows that if you know what you're doing, then you can get much more elaborate models. Um, this is something that we got from, from a user from India who was using this for Blender. So his argument was that most of the tools that he works with doesn't really support creating this, the initial mesh. So he just used fiber mesh to design the initial mesh in the top row and then imports it into his Blender where he can do all the subdivision surface modeling, texturing, et cetera, et cetera. And this is what it looks like when someone takes that same thing and imports it into ZBrush and does a lot more details on top of the base mesh. But again, like ZBrush and all these Blender tools, Maya, et cetera, don't really have the notion of creating a base mesh. Uh, second tool I made, Sil Sketch. Now this is just something, like I'm just going to briefly jump over these steps because these are all the technical details that are boring because what the user sees is the upper left where you just rotate the model into place. If you want to extend the nose, you draw that little green line and you get the result that you see on the bottom right. Or in other words, if you want to create a gigantic ear out of something like this, you just hint at it and it deforms the mesh accordingly. And uh, to show you what people can do with this, this is an editing sequence from one of my students in Germany who presented this and actually implemented this in Disney animation. And uh, this doesn't show the sketches that he's placing, but each sequence is about two or three edits. So from each picture to the next is about two or three placements of a single sketch. And you see how you can open the mouth and shorten it, and now it starts getting more into the exaggerated view. Then you can, of course, at any point rotate the model in any view and start tapering the mouth, etc., etc. And then you can get from something like this to this with no buttons or no special tools or anything else. So the thoughts I have on this as I've elaborated on already is that the most of these tools that we use right now are really, really complex and don't support base model creation. But the Creature Creator and Sport, for example, uh, they're, they're, they really help in giving this to people that don't know what they're doing, actually. Like they try to specialize it for the special for the game that they're trying to make it for. But the, the problem that I always have with is that there's an obvious gap between these two tool sets. 